I want to first get Larry's uh, take on something exciting. We have a video on Infowars.com. Don Salazar wrote about it. Miss South Carolina blast holes through anti-gun question. If we teach people the right way to use guns, then we will reduce the risk. And it's not a super hardcore Second Amendment statement like, you know, guns don't kill people, people do. Well, statistics show more armed states have less crime. Uh, you know, a statement I would have made, but still, compared to the usually the anti-gun rhetoric that they program into these ladies, they tell them that's the right way to answer. It's beautiful. And compared to, you know, that Miss South Carolina that time, um, who was talking about how do we help South Africa or whatever, and she didn't even, wasn't even able to speak. It's very, very refreshing. So here's that clip. America loves our Second Amendment, but gun violence continues to be a tragic problem. Do you support a ban on military-style assault weapons? I don't, but I think it's because we need to increase education. We have to go back there. If we teach people the proper way to use guns, then we will reduce the, the risk of having gun-related um, <laughs> gun accidents. It starts Yay. with education. And they love it, of course. Thank you so much. Okay. You know, the lady that asked the anti-gun question, I'm not going to call her names because she was given a pre-written question. That's on record. But it shows how forever all these pageants have this anti-liberty bent to them in every case. So they asked a question like, well, I know the Second Amendment, you know, Americans love it. But what about all these deaths like it's causing it when the deaths are flat? Overall, gun violence is way down. I, I mean, that would have been a real question. Where do you stand on the Second Amendment would have been a fair question. Then she could say what she really thought. Do you know what it is? Are you for it? Are you against it? Do you have mixed views? That's a fair question. Where do you stand on the right to keep and bear arms, the Second Amendment? Not some slanted question. I will say, though, that lady asking the question looks like the idiot from South Carolina that time who didn't know which end was up. Can we find that clip of her for later for Larry Pratt leaves us? Well, again, the number one battler for the right to keep and bear arms in the country, a very humble man as well, joins us via video Skype. Until the hour ends, then we're going back to your calls and news, folks. That's Larry Pratt of Gun Owners of America. We'll put their website up on screen for TV viewers, but gunowners.org. Uh, Larry, what's your take on that clip we just played? Alex, good to be with you. The uh, I think you're right in your assessment. The gal did rather well considering everything, the environment that she's in. What She probably knew what was expected of her. And when she gave an answer the, that she did, I, I was very encouraged that, uh, my goodness, uh, not only is she a very attractive woman, but uh, she's got a brain in her head. And that seems to kind of be rare at these pageants. <laughs> that, that's not the premium quality they seem to be looking for, no. <laughs> Especially not if she comes in speaking like Annie Oakley. <laughs> <laughs> Again, Larry Pratt joins us, GunOwners.org, Gunners of America. Larry, I, I want to just hear from you what's front and center on your radar, what you think the biggest bad things happening for the right to self-defense are, what the uh, you know good things and bad things that are happening. And I also want to talk about this move to use VA systems against Social Security recipients and where that's going. Well, Alex, this is the same kind of thing at the VA that we first saw, and, and you and I talked about it years ago under George Bush when the what we had dubbed the Veterans Disarmament Act, the so-called Nix Enhancement Act, and we said they're going to use medical diagnoses that have nothing to do with the person being violent to himself or others, which is the are the trigger words in the language of the bill, and certainly there won't be any due process of a court proceeding uh, where your lawyer squares off against the prosecutor and your witnesses against theirs. None of that. It's just some shrink or some other medical worker says, well, it looks like he's got PTSD. Uh, let's uh, put that down. And a lot of times that serves as the trigger to keep people from getting guns, even though the overwhelming number of people who have PTSD are not violent to other people at all. I knew a guy in the military, uh, he'd been in combat, and when he was back home, at least when he was back home, I don't know if it started before, but he told me, he said uh, sometimes he'd wake up in the middle of the night in a panic, grab his pistol that he had by his bed, uh, get into the corner of the room, hunker down and clear the room, as it were, you know, with his pistol moving it back and forth. When he saw that there wasn't anybody there, uh, after all, then 
they put the pistol back on the table and went back to bed. Never hurt anybody. And that's probably about as scary as it gets with most PTSD. And yet they're using that as the reason to say, you can't have a gun, you can't have a concealed carry permit, you're finished with the Second Amendment, bud. Well, most of the family I've known and people that were in heavy combat, when they first come back, and maybe just two weeks out of battles, they hear a car backfire or whatever, they jump onto the table, uh, and sure, they may kind of carry their gun around with them for a while just because they came out of that area, but in a few months, they usually totally get calm and are okay after that. But the point is, you can't take their guns away just because they've been through this process. No. And, of course, as a sidebar, if they live on the Mexican border in places in Arizona, uh, they're going to carry their gun with them everywhere they go, including the bathroom, because they never know when their house is going to be assaulted. Uh, and this is a change from, as I've been told, I interviewed uh, one of the ranchers that owns property down there uh, some time ago on my one-hour show, by the way, on Genesis as well. Uh, I'm uh, not to be compared with Alex Jones, but at least I'm on the same Brother, network. listen, we need to multiply our numbers. I love what you're doing. Plug that show at GCNlive.com. There's links to it at GunOwners.org. Listen to Gun Owners of America. Tune into their yep. show and spread the word and get it on this same station. Ask all of our affiliates to pick it up. You bet. That'd be great if they would. Uh, we're on Saturdays twice. Uh, it's made available on Saturday. And uh, anyway, this gal was very clear that uh, it's a war zone where she is. The, gov the government has given up. They know there's a tunnel under her property with air conditioning being used for people smuggling and all other kinds of smuggling. And they're not doing anything about it. Incredible. Again, the head of Gunners of America, Larry Pratt's with us. Uh, I saw they came out a month and a half ago and said, we want to start targeting Social Security recipients. They, if they even take a money transfer, that means that they are psychologically inept. That means we can basically declare them without a court trial or anything, uh, basically handicapped where they can't have a gun. And the FBI even warned that this was overly broad. Obviously, that's putting it lightly. And then I heard Congress wrote Obama a letter saying, don't direct them to do this. I know you're up on the Hill all the time. What's the latest on the move to disarm Social Security recipients? Alex, I think that's going to stumble. Uh, the president's tried other administrative approaches to putting a lasso around the Second Amendment's neck. And so far, pushback has been pretty extreme. He, he can get away with certain things because they don't have the visibility that the Second Amendment has, but, uh, you know, there are other hot-button issues like abortion, but people that are opposed to abortion typically are not having an abortion. But people who defend the Second Amendment are defending their property. And when the Democrats primarily, but sometimes the Republicans, start talking about additional restrictions and whatnot or guns that they want to take away, they're talking about what people actually own. And I think in addition to the understanding that many gun owners have of the constitutional role of gun ownership, it's that personal element of that's my property. Looking at the positive fronts, and then I want to get back into some of the attacks they're launching, what's some of the positive Second Amendment news you've got, Larry? Well, we're seeing in a number of states, counties, even whole states like Kansas, Telling the feds, if you do something beyond what the Second Amendment permits you in this county, in this state, we'll put you in jail. Uh, and there are some other issues, uh, whether it's the Food and Drug Administration telling farmers what kind of milk they can produce or whatever. But the same kind of confrontation has been occurring in some of these places. That's right. The states the are feds, really starting to push back against federal yes. tyranny. And the feds are backing down. The feds have yet to call anybody on that. They have even out at the uh, Bunkerville, uh, Nevada ranch, the Clive and Bundy ranch, when enough Americans gathered there initially from around the ranch, but then from states around the country, the feds uh, never mind and backed off. So, so far, they realize that their force, if it's met in a credible fashion by an armed citizenry, they're not going to be able to do anything. And let's be clear. Chosen. 
This is open criminal power grab in the Bundy case, running off 300-plus other families that have been there since 1878 that had the grazing rights. Does it matter if the media lied? They had some federal judge say he null and voids all that. Common law says that's a fraud, and they wanted to run off the last farmer to use it as an easement for Chinese solar panels. And they play all these games with, and it just, it, it was tyranny. People saw it, and they didn't want to have a new Bunker Hill out in the middle of the desert with cowboys. That's not the optics they wanted. It shows that they know the American people are so fed up and so angry that if they have the shot heard around the world in the wrong optics, it's going to lead to their downfall. And I don't want to have a physical war, but at some point, Larry, we just can't be completely run over. Well, and so far, people have credibly told the feds, you better not. And the feds get the message, Ugh, that's what the Second Amendment's all about. And so at the moment, the Second Amendment is doing the job it was intended to do, telling the feds here and no farther. And I think that, uh, to me, that says our country still has a pulse. And I'm Delighted to see these kinds of things. Well, watching the news, and I, and I agree that's very positive news. I, I concur. I've seen that myself. But the bad news is clearly the propaganda is accelerating in TV, print, media, movies. There's a new anti-gun push. They've got this new angle, all these fake scientists coming out. Uh, trying to demonize the evidence that m more guns means less crime. That seems to be another assault. Obama's promised a bunch of other extrajudicial, under-the-table attacks. What's the bad news? Well, the bad news, of course, is if we don't push back on this, then Obama's likely to be able to pull something off. hes I'm convinced he's going to do everything he possibly conceivably can in his remaining months in office. We're going to see the full Obama, and it's not going to be very pretty. If uh, we all thought, I believe, that uh, we were watching a, a hard-left socialist in action in his first years in office, now that he doesn't have any elections to run again probably ever in his life in the future, and his party isn't going to have to run with him on the ticket ever again either, they're going to be all in. And I think it's going to be a very desperate fight that we're engaged in uh, until January of 2017. And, boy, if there's any tragedy, and tragedies happen in a country with 330 million people, if there is a tragedy, we know they're going to use it. We know they're going to try to blame all gun owners collectively, that we're involved in it. We've got to be ready to fight that next wave. We've got to be ready, and that is the bottom line. It's just like those Minutemen in uh, Lexington, Massachusetts. We've got to be ready at a minute's notice to come to the defense of, as it was at uh, Clive and Bundy, or uh, be a a milk producer in Elkhart County, Indiana, could be anywhere where the government thinks they might have an advantage, the ability to pull it off. Maybe it's not a major media center, and somehow they can get away with it. One of the things that impressed me about our technology is that on that Bundy Ranch, which is about as far from anywhere as you can get, there's certainly no Internet Wi-Fi on that ranch, somebody was able to set up equipment so that they actually had simulcasts of what were going on. And I think that and the fact that a TV station was able to use similar technology, uh, th that put enough light on the evil deeds of darkness that the feds were up to that they finally realized if we do something, it's going to be on live television and we probably can't get away with it. They got away with it a little bit at Waco, Ruby Ridge. This time they wouldn't have gotten away with it. They knew it. So Harry Reid comes out and calls the people involved domestic terrorists. I think they've jumped the shark. They've gone a bridge too far. I want to ask you about this tidbit of positive news. Coming to the militaries, we know it's in Army times, the last six, seven years saying the founders are bad, gun owners are bad, Christians are bad, the Tea Party's your new enemy, prepare for domestic war, here are armored vehicles, the local police. That for every police department that says we want to fight with the Tea Party, there's another 50 police departments that know the Tea Party's not their enemy. When the Democrats are represented by, you know, kill the police, Black Lives Matter groups. And I have seen a huge wake up in the military and the police the last few years to just a ridiculous level now. They really understand that there are people running Washington that really want to hurt this country and really want to hurt them. And I think the, the programming they tried to give the police and military has blown up in their face. 
I would agree with that assessment. Uh, here in Washington, you have contact with a lot of different